Hello. So, um, when you're learning illustration, a lot of times you're going to run into all of these rules uh, that you see everywhere, advice of all sorts. And the problem is that uh, applying those rules is quite difficult because a lot of them are very vague or contradictory. If you try and apply them just arbitrarily uh, and kind of just force them into every image you create, then you're going to run into a lot of issues where you don't have any kind of cohesion to your to your various uh, images. What you have to do is you have to understand the basic idea that you're trying to get across and then make sure to use it, uh, make sure to use whatever techniques support it. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take an image idea from someone off of Twitter who wanted to make an image of uh, the last or a uh, soul little girl uh, in the face of you know a massive invading uh, fleet of alien ships. So we're going to use his idea, and we're also going to use most of his basic components of uh, of the image, the components that he decided would fit his image best. So we're just going to sketch it out real quick, obviously. But I wanted to show you the sort of thing you might think of as you are doing this kind of work, uh, rather than simply trying to haphazardly apply anything you might have heard of. So the first part uh, is the pieces that he wanted were a sunset, a more or less flat equator, uh, not equator, horizon, uh, a bunch of alien ships. Uh, this pen is not very good at uh, getting narrow. I'll switch it out for this one. A bunch of uh, invading saucers, whatever we decide on, and a water tower with a girl on it. Now, in his original designs, uh, the girl was standing on top of the water tower, something like this. So there's a few things wrong with this image, uh, this design. The biggest thing that's wrong with it is, of course, the uh, highlight here is these here. Uh, even in, in my image, this, this uh, girl has a fairly high highlight in comparison to uh, what it might be in the original. But the thing that pops out the most is still going to be these these uh, at the, these flying saucers. So the girl sort of emphasizes the flying saucers rather than the flying saucers emphasizing the girl. So what we're going to do is we are going to change the way that it's laid out and what the colors are and stuff like that to make sure that that it comes off in the way we want it to. So uh, in the original image, the girl was a dark silhouette or a dark character on top of a dark object. Uh, we're going to change the design of the water tower. First off, we're going to make it square, or rather uh, cylindrical, so that it doesn't... Uh, I don't want it to look too much like the spaceships. And so we'll just do something like this. Uh, and we're also going to add in some details. And the reason for the details is that they will give us an opportunity to do some more interesting stuff with the basic design of the, uh, of the image. So now we have a kind of water tower. And what we're going to do, uh, we're going to make it so the water tower has some character by typing in some letters onto it. Oh, too dark. I mean, too, uh, yeah, well, too dark. Let's uh, go ahead and zoom in here. There they are. And so that makes it clear what, what's going on there. But we can also put the character in. And the idea is that we use a third color and we make her an inverse silhouette, a very bright character. Uh, and we make her, we have to give her a little bit of a dynamic pose because otherwise you won't be able to tell uh, what's going on down there. So we'll make her have a little bit more of a dynamic pose than a, uh, a little girl caught in an alien invasion might normally have. Obviously, this is just sketching out. We're not. Uh, um, this is this wouldn't be the final product, but uh, something something like this um, might do okay as a layout design choice. And then what we can do is we can add in the flying saucers, which are the other major component. Now the problem with the flying saucers is we have to play them down. Uh, if we play them up, they'll become the focus. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put them on their own layer. 
and then what we'll do is we'll muddy them up as we go along. So here is a flying saucer. Uh, you know what might be cool is if we have a big one like this that's partially off screen. That'll give a, uh, a impression that of their size, even though the rest are going to be fairly small. And the idea with our flying saucers is we're actually going to make them numerous as they go up into the sky. Um, and we're going to go ahead and use the clouds to do that by adding in more clouds and hiding them within the orange clouds of the sunset. And that should look pretty neat. Uh, so let's go ahead and just mock that up like this. Oop, that's much too large a particle size. That's much too small a particle size. And that's just right, more or less. Uh, that's way too much red. There. So we bring in the clouds like this and we hide their uh, their forces within them. And then of course we bring in the orangeness of the clouds down below. Now I won't say that this is, this is not a final product. You'd obviously want to go in and, uh, and polish it up as much as you'd like. Uh, you don't, wouldn't want to leave it quite like this, but the basic idea here is that you can't see all of the flying saucers very clearly. Now, uh, we can't simply allow this to be the image, and the reason that I've actually done it like this is um, I want to have a situation where uh, they're framed, but you can see that I've sort of framed them on the wrong side. I need to basically reverse everything, so we'll just do that by going here and transforming the horizontal, uh, and that'll work. And then we want to get rid of this guy and put him over here instead. Oh. Let's go back to the pen. There we go. Something like this. And so the basic idea is that we have this fleet of flying saucers that is framing our character, our heroine, or victim, or whatever is going on, uh, in this sort of manner where they crowd around and uh, um, and you can hide them in the clouds more or less as you as you would prefer uh, but we don't want that to be all there is so what we're going to do is we're going to make these active active participants and the way we're going to do that um, is we're going to add in lights And by adding in lights, we allow them to pop even while they're being obscured by clouds. And that also gives us the opportunity to further obscure them in clouds by showing how the lights are affected by the clouds, which is an easy way to give depth to your, um, to your image. This is not the most reliable brush, but whatever. And you can make these any color, but red is already taken by the background, so we don't want them to be bright red. Um, it's better for them to be some other color. Uh, I've chosen just white in this case, but you might want to tint them with a blue uh, to match the character that we are trying to build here. Um, so when it comes to this large guy, we have a lot of options as to exactly what we want to do, but I think the best option would be to have that character, or that, that ship, um, be searching. So if we put a searchlight out, or several searchlights out, uh, come on, I need something with a better response to pressure than that. There we are. So if we do something like this, come on, yep. It's hard to get this to work right, because I generally don't do it this way, but the way I do it is more time consuming, and I don't want to spend all that time I might have to, because this is really pretty bad. Well, whatever. Um, and we, we, we can further cement this by, first off, we don't want it to be anywhere near 100%. We can further cement this by having other flying saucers also searching, but these are too high off the ground. Something like this. And then, of course, to clean this up, you can just erase the pieces that you don't like. 
um, however you want to do that. And touch it up if you need to, like this. And we can add in a lot of uh, focal points, so we can put in some... Blue is a bad idea in this place because it's kind of a yellowy foreground thing, so you might add in some yellow for the searchlight itself. But you can modify this to look however you want it to look. This is just sort of a quick... Um, demo, as it were. And if we're going to have a source for these lights, we better make sure that the lights actually line up with them properly. So something like this. That sort of thing. Uh, this also gives us a lot of other opportunities to add depth, so we're going to clear away how it works here, and we're actually going to cut like this, see? And then what we can do is we can add in a, a lining of, uh, of color on the water tower, which we're going to make blue, specifically because that means that our character is sort of like a bullseye. And we can sort of allow that light to highlight what had been just a pure silhouette. Sort of like that. And of course you can also add in cityscape stuff if you'd like. Um, although I don't recommend blue for that, I recommend gray. A blue-gray might work. Now, I'm not trying to draw the city very realistically, I'm just kind of blocking it out quite nice and quick. But uh, the basics are pretty straightforward. You just make sure that the buildings have a sense of depth to them. And, uh, and you can do basically whatever sort of improv you'd like with the, the exact structures of the buildings. Um, especially if they're going to be deep in shadow like I've left them here. Uh, I'm not going to try and draw out the city just because it would be a lot of effort for uh, you know a short little 15-minute... Uh, drawing process, but uh, it is good to make the foreground buildings appear larger than the background buildings, which I generally do. Uh, I try to make that happen. So, you know, even though I haven't drawn any kind of actual perspective uh, guide or anything like that, I try and keep in mind the basics um, so that things look decent enough. Uh, and to make things really uh, a little bit nicer, what you can do is you can add in something like windows or anything really to make it so that your buildings clearly have a building-like shape. Um, but if you're going to draw the buildings, you should really draw the buildings. Since I'm just blocking this out, I'm not going to bother drawing them, but in the final uh, you would probably draw the whole city, which would be a big, you know, tremendous time waste, but that's the sort of thing you have to do. Uh, now in his image he has mountains in the background, something like this. And that's not a terrible idea, so we'll go ahead and just break up the the uh, um, the straight line I put in there a little bit. Not enough to really matter, just so that it doesn't look completely fake. There we are. Uh, and similarly, if you wanted to, you could go in and, and randomly block out pieces of uh, the land to give it depth. Uh, whatever you decided would work or not work. Uh, in any way you in any way you like. Uh, it's something where you can play around with it quite a lot. You don't need to. Uh, um, you don't need to be perfect, uh, at least not at this stage. So in the end, what you have is a, a very simple layout where you've got a fleet of ships, uh, and some of them without their lights, because apparently I'm not very good at actually finish what I started. Uh, but you've got a fleet of ships like this, and uh, uh, and they, although there are thousands of them they serve to highlight the character rather than to hide the character. Now, these searchlights may be a little bit much, um, 
because they do send, they do kind of drown out this searchlight. But overall, I think you can see the sort of design I would go for. Uh, the character is just very, very briefly blocked out. If we wanted to uh, make the character seem like uh, uh, like a girl, we could add in some secondary characteristics like hair and a billowing skirt or whatever. Um, I don't know how important that is in terms of uh, 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 in terms of the story that we want to tell, um, but it does make the character more recognizably uh, being blown by events by having her hair and uh, and dress being blown uh, in the wind. Either way, uh, this is just a quick little demonstration of how you would apply some of the things you might have learned uh, in in trying to learn how to do illustration. And I mean, this is not a school pro this is not a school project. I'm just kind of uh, blocking it together. And there's lots of other details you could do to try and spruce it up some, like adding in uh, reflections of the of the sunset on some of these. Um, to give them depth or or whatever, uh, but basically some of the details, some of the pieces that I, I did here, I ignored the three rule, the the thirds rule. You can see that there really isn't any focal point in thirds here, um, and uh, and a lot of people would would sort of get upset about that, but I think that it's okay to ignore that rule uh, if you have a clear image in your mind of what you would like it to be. I ignored a lot of other rules. But one of the rules I didn't ignore is the balance of color. This is predominantly orange with a small amount of black. Um, and I'm sort of black as a secondary color rather than being a shading situation just because there's so much of it. Um, I'm using this bright blue as a highlight. So this is an orange, blue, and black image. And the ratios are not nearly equal. They're split very carefully apart from each other. Um, and I'm using a lot of size variation to try and uh, uh, create a sense of depth and scale by having ships of a smaller size coming forward into the foreground. And then you have this tower, which is in the far foreground, uh, which sort of uh, completes the, the, uh, the scale here. Um, and the tower is actually, it's got to be way in the foreground because these buildings are much smaller than it is. So it's got to be something like this. Well, that's the basic idea. There were a lot of other rules that I either considered and threw away or ignored or didn't even think of because they just didn't apply. But basically, I just wanted to show you that you don't have to follow every single rule you ever hear. They're meant to be applied when your situation um, calls for it. You have to have what you need in mind, and then you can figure out what rules apply to allow that to work well. Um, you don't just willy-nilly apply every rule you've ever heard of. That's it.